Next on Oklahoma Capital Connection, we explore our state government with state representatives Marty Quinn and Pat Owenby. Hi, I'm Dan Chidell, OETA Executive Director. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Oklahoma Capital Connection. My first guest is State Representative Marty Quinn from District 9 in Northeast Oklahoma. Representative Quinn, it's great to have you here, and uh, I'm so glad to see you here from uh, Claremore, uh, old, old stopping grounds. Good to be here, yeah. and appreciate the opportunity. Uh, you are uh, involved with uh, your Vice Chair of the Insurance Committee, A&B Common Education, Rules, Transportation, uh, of course, um, you uh, cover uh, Claremore and uh, some of Collinsville, Owasso, that area over in uh, northeastern Oklahoma. Uh, of course, Rogers State University and the Will Rogers Memorial Museum, uh, PSO, and uh, the J.M. Davis Arms and Historical Museum. Great, great uh, area over there and good people. Um, I wanted to talk with you a little bit about uh, what's happening over in, in your neck of the woods and how things have been going uh, for you and your family and and the folks over in uh, Claremore. Well, I feel very blessed, uh, Dan, to be there. Uh, I do think that it's a quality part of the state, as with many areas, but I uh, feel, feel blessed to be in the Claremore Rogers County area. They have a lot to offer. Uh, people are uh, of good quality, and probably like a lot of other people in Oklahoma, just uh, looking for a way to, uh, best way to provide for the family, and, and uh, um, our situation over there, we feel like is uh, good. We continue to grow. Uh, things are looking well. And, and you were elected in 2010, is that yes, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so you've got a you've got a few uh, years to go. A couple right? of sessions. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, you're uh, a, an insurance agent by trade, right? Yes, sir. And uh, I know that uh, you're uh, going to be uh, vice chair of uh, the insurance committee. What what does the insurance committee actually do, and and what does that incorporate? What are some of the things that you'll be um, wrestling with, if you will, uh, this uh, this session? Well, obviously anything to do with um, uh, any insurance products, anything uh, that's going to affect that industry, we're going to deal with. Uh, we actually haven't had our first meeting yet uh, for that committee. Um, I haven't, uh, the deadline was January the 17th, so we hadn't seen a lot of uh, actual bills uh, that, that might uh, possibly come through that committee. But, you know, the, in, in past they've dealt with the health care exchange, which was a big issue for us. Uh, we know that uh, Obamacare is going to have some issues that uh, we'll be looking at. Uh, so that would be a broad perspective uh, of what we'll have the possibility of, of dealing with this session. Well, the, the health care exchange, uh, specifically uh, Representative Quinn, is that, um, you know, has, is that something that you've already thought a little bit more about in regards to how that might um, be put together for Oklahoma? Would it be more of a regional thing or... Does it doesn't even really matter uh, regions or across the uh, state lines? Well, there are some states that are, are putting together exchanges. And, uh, uh, you know, if you use a, a basic idea of giving a place where people can go and, and find a lot of uh, products, um, you know, that would be maybe a more innocent version of that. Uh, but then if you g uh, go to the next step and tie it to some of the things that the Obama administration wants to do, then therein lies, in my opinion, the problem. Uh, so uh, I do think that we probably have plenty of room uh, to improve our health care uh, system uh, and making uh, it more available to, uh, to as many people as possible. Uh, I don't like the federal government, uh, you know, forcing uh, their brand of that on us and, and uh, uh, would, would be glad to, uh, to address that in committee. Okay. <laughs> well, good luck. I know that's going to be, uh, that's gonna be uh, probably one of those issues that uh, it just – doesn't seem like there's really any easy answer to. Yeah. Um, it sounds like your committee will be spend a lot of time and uh, hard work at trying to develop something. I think it, I think it's always good for us, even on those things that we don't necessarily believe in. I think it's good for us to listen uh, to to hear what those uh, points of view are, uh, and because every once in a while you find uh, something that you hadn't thought of uh, that that may need to be tweaked in the system to make the the system. We have a good healthcare system. But there are people that, uh, that don't have access to that, uh, that we still wind up paying for. So I, I'm just going to keep an open mind to that. But I do know what I know of, uh, of what President Obama has tried to, to push on us, that um, the vast majority of that I'm, 
I'm not interested in, but I'm not going to be closed-minded to it and, and uh, hopefully have the opportunity to address uh, some things that will be beneficial to, uh, to the citizens of Oklahoma. Well, good luck in that. I know that's, um, that's going to be a challenge for you. Uh, education, you're uh, also <coughs> involved with A and B, Common Education Committees, and um, let me talk a little bit about what's coming up with education, what you see uh, that your committee will be working on, uh, and then how that uh, really ties back to gun legislation, possibly. I know that that's been uh, in the news. A lot of people have been talking about gun legislation. I know that the lieutenant governor and, and uh, I think it's the School Safety Commission mm -hmm. uh, has been talking about um, how to deal with uh, the safety of our, our children in, in schools. And I'm guessing that's going to be one of the issues that you'll be working on and talking about. Yeah, there are some, uh, some bills uh, that have, have been filed. Uh, there's also uh, Lieutenant Governor Lamb uh, has put together a group uh, that's going to uh, to bring a a, um, a wide range of individuals uh, together and start meeting and talking about that issue as a whole. Um, I think the key thing, and I'll talk more about you know the gun issue in, in a little bit, but the key thing for education is funding. Uh, but I don't think that we can talk about just funding uh, in our school systems. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not interested in just going out and closing schools, for example, to make it more efficient. Uh, I think that you have to be careful with that, but I do think that any time you're talking about funding, you have to make sure that that system is as, as efficient as possible. If you're talking about individual districts, which I do all the time, I know many of them are, are running on uh, a razor-thin budget. But when you look at the uh, state's education uh, system, we have 520-something school districts in 77 counties. And I do believe that there's some areas there that, that we can become uh, more efficient and allow us to be able to take some of the same dollars that we're spending. Uh, we're in the neighborhood of 2.3 to $2.5 billion, I think, for common education. That's a lot of money. Uh, but when you talk to individual districts, their the class sizes are up. And um, uh, that's, in, in some cases, especially when you're looking at kindergarten, elementary uh, type classes, we'd like to keep those around 20. So we do need some additional teachers there. And, and we'd like to address some of the um, uh, issues as far as teacher pay is concerned. But in doing that, we've got to address all the issues, uh, not just the ones that, that require more money. We need to make sure that, that the system is efficient as, as possible. Uh, address some of the uh, other issues along with that. Uh, that'll free up some money. And then they need additional money, uh, which we've got to find a way to do as well. Uh, what, what about charter schools? What's your thoughts there? Well, <coughs> um, I think the big thing with the other schools, let's, let's, let's make it even broader okay. than that. Let's sure. talk about private schools. Let's talk about virtual schools, charter schools, school choice in general, uh, public schools. Uh, I think the, the common thread between all of those, and I blame this on the federal government uh, to some degree. I don't claim to have all the answers for education, but I do know as a parent, I do know as a, uh, a person that was a product of, pro of uh, public education, uh, as a you know, as a taxpayer, that if uh, if we were not providing the product that the parents and the taxpayers want, then these people wouldn't be wanting to go to charter schools or private schools or virtual schools. But just because there's some people that want to go to some of those other avenues doesn't mean that public schools are are bad, because I think in many cases um, they offer a good product. I think there's many many dedicated people. Uh, teachers, administrators that are very committed to uh, our student population. But uh, the federal government, you know, they dangle the carrot out there and, and they offer you the millions of dollars as long as you do business their way. And what the parents and taxpayers have said is that we don't necessarily like the way uh, that you're doing business. We don't like what you're teaching at the school. We don't uh, you know, whatever preferences it is that those individuals have. And just like a business, uh, whether it's a restaurant, um, you know, whether it's the car lot, uh, the customer, if they don't like that product, then they're going to go somewhere else. And in America, I think that we have the right to do that. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, uh, we only have a few moments left. Uh, so, Representative Quinn, I'd like to ask you about transportation because I know that's another uh, committee that you're going to be on. And um, what do we see in regards to uh, roads and construction and uh, transportation? Um, I think it. Uh, uh, Commissioner Ridley is no longer mm -hmm. with the uh, Department of Transportation. How is that going to impact the future of uh, Well, I think, I think Secretary uh, Ridley has done a great job uh, in laying the foundation for that. The eight-year plan that uh, is in place 
and continues to evolve. You know, as, as one year is completed, another one rolls on. I think that's a great model. And uh, again, as long as we're efficient and we continue to fund those, uh, that eight-year plan uh, as, as much as possible with the budget uh, dollars that we have, uh, I think that, that we're going to make a lot of improvement. Already have. He's done a, a tremendous job along with his uh, people in, in correcting the bridge issues, and, and that's ongoing. Uh, so I think that we're headed in the right direction uh, as far as transportation is concerned. And if you don't mind, one of the things that I, I left out on the education side, Dan, was addressing that gun, uh, the gun issue. Right. The, yep, sir, the legislation uh, there, we've got to look at that. Uh, I think that we've got to give school systems the ability to uh, not only protect themselves from an administrative standpoint, but make sure that they're uh, in, a, in a more pr protected uh, situation as far as their student population is concerned. So I do think that that's uh, something that's ongoing uh, and, and uh, will be addressed reasonably. I don't think that we put a, a we're not saying we're going to put a gun in every teacher's desk. Uh, I think that you, you limit that to specific people. Uh, with specific training, and I think that you can ad address those because we, you get into putting police uh, in every school, you're not going to be able to afford uh, that. Right, right. And I'm not sure that that's the environment that we want to create. But uh, anyhow, that's, I look forward to addressing that as well. Well, and, and again, um, <coughs> we appreciate you coming in, uh, Representative Quinn. I, just one last um, question I had is uh, regards to actually Claremore itself. Um, you know, there had been a lot of discussions in regards to raise rail lines and, and also a loop around. Has there been any further discussion and where, where are we at with, with that? Th those talks are ongoing. There are things that, that they're uh, probably going to be working on within the next year, mm -hmm. a year and a half, uh, to address some of those transportation issues. Long term, uh, in my opinion, uh, I believe that we have to have a, uh, a um, overpass situation on the south end and then on the north end mm -hmm. and I think long term I think you need to be able to, to look at connecting those with some uh, some form of a bypass system and and that alleviates the issues that we have with highway 20 getting from the east side to the uh, from the west side to the east side uh, and then addressing that uh, that traffic north and south headed either to Tulsa or back and forth uh, at the end of the work day so okay. well great well, Representative Quinn, thank you so much for coming in. It's always a pleasure seeing you. And, uh, you know, that's all the time we have, but uh, we want to thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Next up, we'll be talking with State Representative Pat Owenby from District 48 in Southern Oklahoma. And here with me now is State Representative Pat Owenby from District 48 in Southern Oklahoma. Representative Owenby, welcome to the Oklahoma Capital Connections. Well, it's great to be here. You bet. Well, thank you for uh, coming in. Uh, let's just get right to it. I know that uh, you are the chair of the Human Services Committee. You're also on uh, higher education and career tech and public safety. So it sounds like you're going to be a pretty, pretty busy uh, man this uh, session. Well, I think I am going to be, you know, and I'm, I'm, I feel very fortunate. Uh, all these committees I had asked for and the Human Services Committee, I kind of have a, a, even more of a stake in because uh, last year, uh, Speaker Steele had assigned me along with three other uh, legislators to a task force to look at how we could reorganize the Department of Human Services. So uh, Jason Nelson uh, led that, the way on that. He was the chairman of it. We had a, it was a bipartisan group. Uh, Pam Peterson uh, was also on that uh, committee and a couple of others. And really what we tried to do was uh, look from the ground up at the Department of Human Services. We started with, uh, with uh, the frontline workers and, and moved up. We went all across the state. Wade Russolo was a big part of that committee as well. And so I say that uh, because it really gave us an insight as to where the problems were. And there were several pieces of legislation. You remember the vote we had on basically allowing the governor now to appoint that uh, DHS director. Um, all that came out of uh, the, what, the lawsuit as well as uh, what we did as a committee. So um, I'm excited and, and most of those people are on these other uh, committees when it comes to DHS and that's very important. Well, <clears throat> before we get into more uh, information about your legislative activities this session, uh, why don't we talk a little bit about who you are so that uh, our viewers 
out there at home uh, get to know you a little bit more. Uh, sure. You're, you're some of your background, you're broadcasting for 35 years, is that correct? About 35, 36 is that years. Right? Okay. Yeah, I know Let's it's hard to believe. When you were a kid. It's hard to, that's right, when I was 10, I started, you know. Uh, Listen to transistor radios. In fact, when I was coming out to the studio, you know, I mean, this is, an, this is where I, I didn't live too far from here and, and actually went to work at Channel 9, was my first broadcast work in editing. And I tell you, broadcasting is a great, uh, you know, you, you shouldn't even be getting paid for this because <laughs> you should be, you know, this is just so much fun, but really enjoyed it. Well, we all, we all have to live, right? <laughs> We've got to make a living some way. That's right. Um, you know, you, uh, you also, uh, you along with your wife, Kathy, uh, spent some time over in Zimbabwe. We did. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? It sounds like a very interesting trip and, and what, what actually you were doing over in Zimbabwe. Well, actually, my brother-in-law um, is a pastor, a Baptist pastor. Now he actually works with another company that, 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 that handles mission trips. And this was a mission trip with his church. Uh, from, down in Texas, and we had 16 of us. We went to, to Zimbabwe. We worked with a church there in Zimbabwe and basically spread the gospel, uh, and it was an amazing, probably one of the highlights of my life okay. to be able to, to go there. We actually, when we first started the trip, we were going to stay in a hotel there. Well, we ended up basically staying with African families, and, we, and, and I've been over there twice now uh, for two summers, um, and we had such good friends. Uh, you know, if you've ever imagined God putting you out in the middle of Africa and you could see signs out there that say, uh, beware of uh, lions and tigers and wildlife, you're like, you know, that would be your worst fear of all. Yeah. But no, it was, it was an amazing experience. It, it also showed me how small the world really is. That, uh, so, I mean, it's fantastic. So any plans to go back? I'd love to go back. And we still talk to uh, many of our friends that we made when we were over there by cell phone. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, right now, uh, if, if I do, it'll be, uh, it'll be ob obviously off session. Right, uh, right, and I hope right. to maybe do that one okay. of these days. Well, I, I know that you're uh, very involved with community as well. United Way, uh, you've also involved, uh, involved with YCM, uh, YMCA, the uh, Chamber of Commerce, Crime Stoppers. Uh, the Oklahoma Blood Institute, and the list goes on. Uh, can you tell us about some of your activities in, in those well, groups? Well, you know, part of it, you know, from the broadcast perspective, as you know, you are involved with so many things in the community, and that was a great thing. But uh, I served as president of the United Way of Southern Oklahoma and, and drive chair. Um, I've, you know, the Southern Oklahoma Blood Institute is a great organization. Um, and... Uh, and in the Ardmore Kiwanis Club, I'd served as president there before. But just over the years, I've, I've done an awful lot uh, in the, uh, been able, been fortunate to be able to be a part of the community like that. And uh, I can only tell you that Southern Oklahoma has got such a can-do spirit. It is just a, a great way to, to be involved, to be involved in the community, so. You're, you're in District 48. It covers yes, three, three uh -huh. counties, is that correct? Three counties, Garvin, uh, basically Southern Garvin, Western Murray, and then most of Carter County. Um, uh, and we are a, what we consider what you know, lake country area is what tourism considers us. And it is beautiful lakes, though right. they're down a little bit. We need some water in them. Right. Um, but uh, Lake Murray, Lake Texoma is not too far from there. Um, so uh, Turner Falls is right there in my district. So really a, 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 a beautiful area. And if, I would encourage everyone, if they haven't been down lately, to come down and spend some of their dollars there and enjoy the, the great outdoors. Okay. That might cost you for a commercial. <laughs> <day. laughs> That's right. I'll pay you afterwards. Okay, How about right. that? Okay. Appreciate that. Uh, some of the things that you have coming up in the legislature uh, this session, uh, driver's license renewal, is that correct? Is I that do have a bill, there? a driver's license renewal bill, and it's just a common sense sure. bill. How many times have you... Uh, Someone out there I know has, has uh, had an opportunity to, they, they've looked at the driver's license, it's expired, they go back in, it's been past the 30 day period, now they have to find their birth certificate again. Mm -hmm. That happens a lot. And I've had several constituents that have had problems that are from other states that have moved here. And so basically what this does is, after you've shown that birth certificate the first time on the driver's license, if it expires, you don't, no longer have to show that birth certificate again. It's just a, a simple fix. And uh, it also deals with uh, uh, the public, Department of Public Safety and some issues that they're trying to get through, too. But it's, it's a pretty simple bill. Okay. And then uh, you also, there's a voting education bill. Is that 
something yes. to do with the Coast Guard Auxiliary, or is that uh, You know, actually, th it, this came out of an interim study. Back in the summer, there was a tragic accident at Lake Murray that, that, uh, that actually took the life of a, a very popular young lady from our area. And, um, you know, the, the, the person that hit this woman seemed to be going a little bit fast. It was dark. It was at night. And we got to looking at some of the laws in other states when it comes to uh, boating. And basically what this would do is uh, anybody born after 1992 would be required to take a course, about a six-hour course. It's a course, by the way, we, we actually are, are doing now for 12 to 17-year-olds. And since Oklahoma has implemented that for that age group, deaths have gone from two to three a year to zero. So what we're wanting to do is implement that to anyone after basically the age of 21 would be required, or before 21 would be required to take that course. And um, Texas does it, um, Arkansas, uh, Missouri. You can't go to Texas without a license, without that, without that certificate, and drive a boat legally. Do, do, they, do they also, in your bill, will that also address those that are, you know, like 90 that are driving boats? Well, not, actually, 95? no, actually it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> it, this is a born after date. We have to start somewhere, okay, so you're all right, okay. Okay, all right. After, <laughs> after 1992, I think right. it's a born after 92 is uh, 93, so... Um, yeah, uh, those those ninety year olds don't have to worry about. All right, not at, at <laughs> least not this year, right? Uh, what about sales tax holiday? I mean, we, I know that you've right. uh, been talking a little bit about sales tax holiday, and um, what, what's the impact with uh, with that? Uh, well, you know, for years Oklahoma, as many other states, about eighteen other states across the country, have a sales tax holiday. Certainly, since we're in Ardmore, we live in Ardmore in southern Oklahoma, we get a little bit more uh, competition amongst the state of Texas. We're 35 miles from Gainesville, and Texas also has a sales tax holiday. One thing that has never been included in the school's school sales tax holiday, basically is the way it is, back to school, is that uh, it gives, you know, you, you free up the, the, the taxes on clothing, but uh, when it comes to school supplies, that type of thing, you still have to pay that. So what we're wanting to do, or what my bill basically addresses that, in that we want to include school supplies as well as uh, computer supplies such as iPads, that type of thing that may be used for college or for high school and, you know, even younger. So you, th you think you'll have much pushback on that bill? Oh, I'm sure I will. And in, in the legislature, you always get pushback. Oh. I ran something a few years ago, and... Uh, along that, and we got close. It actually cleared the House, but it didn't uh, didn't clear the Senate. Um, it's hard to tell. You know, a lot, it's, it's going to be a money issue when we get the fiscal impact. It'll probably tell us a lot, but it it will help. I think the average Oklahoman, when it comes to uh, you know dressing those kids and getting the the supplies and that type of thing, it'll also help our retailers across our state as well. So I think it'd be a good bill. Well, uh, <clears throat> Representative Owen, we've got just a, a couple of minutes left, so I just wanted to make sure that that we've covered most everything that, that you'd like to cover. Is there sure. anything else that uh, we missed that uh, you'd like to add? Well, I think we're going to have a, a, a great session this year. I'm excited that T.W. Shannon is our, is our speaker. Uh, I, I will share with you that since I have been in the legislature, I've never seen the camaraderie that we have as a total membership as I have seen this year. So I am excited to, to be a part of that. We've got some tough issues like workers' comp reform and and uh, and the sale uh, the, the uh, uh, tax revenue, uh, how we're going to reform that. Um, but what's uh, your thoughts on that? You know, I, um, I I wouldn't have voted for it last year simply because um, you know we've got sequestration coming up from the federal government. We've got so many things. Once we cut the taxes, you'll never get them back. Mm -hmm. Look at Kansas; they're 13 percent down where they were a year ago. So I'm I would be cautious about it. Uh, they're going to have to show me in the bill that what whoever has that bill that it's a responsible bill because we have still we, we're responsible to a lot of people in obviously all of Oklahoma and we have to make sure we have enough money for education public safety mental health uh, these areas uh, I know Republicans are for less taxes but we have to be also be responsible as well right. so um, well I know that uh, you know we we had the representative Graw on uh, earlier in the, the uh, season here and we talked a little bit about workers comp reform yes. and so that we know that that's going to be a big issue and what do you see some of the hurdles that uh, you'll need to overcome there? Well I think the biggest hurdle so many want to see an administrative system and and I would agree with that obviously workers comp is so high in Oklahoma I think we're rated sixth in the country and one of the studies that, that, that I've seen as far as costs 
But I think the hurdle is still going to be changing systems, if that's the case, uh, because we're going to end up having to run two systems for a period of time to get through that. Um, um, so, you know, I will say this, we have a bunch of Republicans in the House, Senate, we've got one sitting in the governor's chair. We have no excuse. We've got to start getting those things done. And I think we're going to do our best to get them done. Okay. Well, we wish you the best during the thank legislative you. session. And uh, that's all the time we have. So, uh, again, thank you for being here today. Uh, we also want to thank our viewers for tuning in. We hope that you'll join us next week for another edition of Oklahoma Capital Connection with Representative Tom Newell and Senator Clark Jolly. We invite you to share your questions or comments about Oklahoma Capital Connection by calling us at 1-800-879-6382 or email info at oeta.tv. You can also find OETA on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, I'm Dan Scheidel, and this is your Oklahoma Capital Connection.